In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at how to do voiceover recording. And as a bonus, we're going to show you how to use the voice changer tool in one of two ways. It's surprisingly useful. So what we're going to do is work on this very short, about 18 second clip. The gal is typing on her laptop and the scene starts with the camera way above her. It will pan down to come on top of her. So we'll go to the first frame and we'll do a voiceover. How do we do that? We look at the media room and that's where we want to be. And then below the icons, we have this little record button. When I click on it, I have three options. We're going to choose a middle one, which is record a voiceover. And then we have this panels open up. You notice we have a meter measuring what I'm doing. And then we have several selections, device, profile, and preferences. I'm going to click on device. This chooses the device we're recording. I'm currently using this line one M dash two. If I have another device here, I have one, but it's a keyboard and that won't work. But if I had multiple mics, I could pick the mic I wanted from this list and also the input volume. We're going to settle with the only one I can use right now and I'll click on OK. The second we can use is profile. Let's click on that. Now this gives the quality profile setup. I have my kilohertz. I have my number of bits and I can do mono or stereo. Now the default will always be untitled. If you've saved a profile before and click on the down arrow, it will actually load that instead but it will default to untitled. Now, if I want to change it, I can change it and save it or just change it for this particular recording. I could change it down here to any of the options listed here. Uh, I tend to want to go mono when it comes to voice, not stereo, but this is what we have. We can do mono or stereo and in all of these options and these ranges. Uh, let's just pick another one. Let's pick 3200 and we'll go 16-bit mono. And if I want to save it, I click on Save As, and I can give it a name. I'll call it Alternate. Press Enter, and now I've saved it. I also have the original one called Test, which I can use. So I can flip between them. If I want to remove one, I simply highlight it, click on Remove, and now it's no longer in my drop-down list. So you can have as many profiles as you select. We'll choose this one. Click on OK. Next we have preferences. Now the preferences are interesting. You have one which is time limit. This is when the recording will stop. And you notice I happen to have my time limit on for this one because my particular video clip ends at short of 18 seconds. I can turn my time limit on and exactly at 17 seconds the recording will stop automatically. I don't have to click a button. So sometimes I find that useful because it limits. I have to watch my time code to make sure I don't go over because if I'm talking or not, it will stop the recording. I'm going to turn it off in this particular case. Then you can add a three second delay before recording. Sometimes people like that to catch their breath and pace the start of the recording. I like to leave that on. There's an auto fade in and an auto fade out. I tend not to use those because I'd rather do a fade in or fade out on the audio track rather than use it this way automatically. So if I like the preferences I've chosen, I click on the OK button. And now, because I chose the three, three second delay, what will happen will be when I am ready to record, once I get the pop-up screen about where to record, it will count down. So I'll click on record. And now I have my pop-up screen of where to record. I can record below track one or anywhere else I want to go in my project. Below track one is fine since I only have one track active in this recording. And I'll click on OK. And when I do that, I'll see a three, two, one countdown. And then I'll begin recording. There is still some controversy in the work world regarding whether you should work at home or work in the office. Some workplaces require work in the office. Others are more flexible, but the jury is out as to which is best and what will work in any situation. Now you notice I had to click on the stop record button 
in order to stop because I did not use my time. But now I have the recording. Let's go back to the first frame and listen. There is still some controversy in the work world regarding whether you should work at home. It's very simple, very straightforward. But let me show you something else that's rather intriguing. We can also decide that in this particular case, I would rather have a female voice talk than a male voice talk. So how can I make that happen? I'm going to highlight the audio clip and I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on AI Voice Changer. Now I have my AI voice changer and I can narrow it down. I can choose the type. I want a human voice. Language, I'm going to use English. That will limit my options. And gender, let's make it female. I can also choose age. Do I want an adult, a teenager, an older adult? Let's use adult. And let's click on Abby. Now we have a rendering for preview that it shows as to which is best and what will work in any situation. Okay, let's go back to the beginning and listen. There is still some controversy in the work world regarding whether you should work at home. Now, I'm not sure I want Abby. Let's try Cassie. It will re-render. Or work in the office. Let's try that and play it. There is still some controversy in the work world regarding whether you should work at home or work in the office. Some workplaces require work in the office. Let's try Grace. There is still some controversy in the work world regarding whether you should work at home or work in the office. Some workplaces require... Now if I like the person I want to use, I simply click on apply and it will change it on this track. I will still have a copy of both of them. But let me show you another way to use that if you have audio director. Okay, now I want to do a right click Edit Audio, and I will edit in Audio Director. That will open up my copy of Audio Director, and I can play it. There is still some controversy in the work. If I want to change the audio, I now have a new option. When I click on Edit Audio, I have Voice Changer here as well. Now, when you use either of these options for the first time, it's going to load some code, and that will take a bit of time. But here I have the same options I had before. I have language, I have gender, and I have age. And we actually have the same voices that we can use as we could before. I can click on Preview. There is still some controversy in the work world regarding whether you should work at home or work in the office. Some workplaces require work in the office. Others are more flexible. Okay, I can use that and I can also do other editing if I want to modify it in terms of tweaking the this in Audio Director. But if you don't have Audio Director, and I know many users do not, you're a little bit more limited, but you do have the same tools. So if you have Audio Director, you can be even more precise. You can do some equalizing, you can do some trimming, you can do some fading and boosting, and other kinds of things in Audio Director on top of this. But let's apply it and see what happens. And then I'll close it out and it asks me if I want to save it. Yes, I will. Take me back to Power Director. And now I have a female voice narrating. See, in the work world regarding whether you should work at home or work in the office. Some workplaces require work in the office. So that gives you an option that you have if you want to do not only voice over recording, but voice changing to fit the situation in which you're using that audio track in your production. Mm -hmm.